We have new developments tonight in the effort to put the uh, new evidence, the Menendez brothers' murder case, in front of a judge. Lyle Menendez and his brother, uh, Eric, got life in prison for nearly 30 years ago uh, for murdering their parents in 1989. Their names and their case, they are forever part of the American legal fabric. A TV documentary released earlier this year revealed something that had never been seen or heard in any of the Menendez trials. The brothers' defense team wants this new material introduced legally, and now the wheels are turning that might actually make that happen. Let's bring in the Menendez brothers' attorney, Mark Garagos, uh, who also co-hosts the podcast Reasonable Doubt uh, with Adam Carolla. Uh, thank you for being with us, Mark. Explain what's going on here. You filed uh, some legal paperwork to get a new trial, and now you've gotten a response, which has really not happened in, in more than a decade. What's going on here? Well, I think you captured it exactly. We filed what's uh, the legal term is a writ of habeas corpus, which is basically, Your Honor or Judge, bring us the body is the legal term. Um, we filed that in May. The judge, to his credit and to uh, our hopes, issued a, a request that the district attorney um, reply to that writ, which is uh, a, a substantial move. And the district attorney just this past week, as I think you reported um, exclusively, uh, has now asked for a, and we have agreed to an additional 90 days so that they can do a deep dive into this. And it appears from all appearances, it looks like they're taking it very seriously and we're cautiously optimistic. The fact that this DA, uh, George Gascon, is in charge there, you know, the, the word on the street in L.A. is that he's the kind of person who would want to right this wrong. Um, do you get that feeling from the D.A.? I mean, do you feel like we're in like a, a moment here where this could actually happen? Well, I'll give you this. The, the politics at the time, one of the uh, kind of frustrations, if you will, and I don't even know if frustration is the right word. I lived this in real time. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, meaning I remember what was happening politically, um, both uh, outside in the community and internally in the DA's office. And there's not a whole lot of people, but there are there are a couple still in the DA's office who have that institutional memory. What I'm talking about is trial number one, which had two juries, ended up with the majority of the jurors finding that this was not murder, that this was a manslaughter, meaning that malice was negated because of the abuse. Um, what happened between trial number one with those two juries and trial number two with just one jury was the O.J. Simpson acquittal. And that had that mm. reverberated greatly in not only nationally, but politically, internally in the DA's office. So interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it from that perspective. I, of course, thought a lot about just the time being different and the fact that, you know, male victims of this kind of abuse, people didn't really view them the same way they were made fun of uh, on the late night shows. And it, it was just a, a different time. Um, how would this play you know, out? By, by the way, Brian, I don't want to let that point go uh, on uh, without an exclamation yeah. point. I've heard people say, and I think you're, you bring up a great point, that if these were the Menendez sisters, they would not be in prison. I couldn't agree more. How will this play out from here? Like, like what could happen? I mean, does the DA come back and say, you know, free the Menendez brothers? Does the DA come back and say, let's have another trial with the new evidence? Like, could this go a couple of different ways? And there really is uh, almost like a uh, menu for, of column A, column B, column C, column D. The uh, different permutations are really, I don't want to say endless, but it's uh, clearly there are a lot of options here. The DA could um, uh, could welcome this, could say, yes, we want a hearing. We want to get this all out. Uh, one of the things that I think uh, has been remarkable to me is that not only is Jose Menendez's sister, but also Kitty Menendez's sister, both of whom are still living, have expressed in the last couple of years their support for the boys to be free. That, I think, is huge because generally in California, since the time that they were convicted, that the uh, brothers were convicted, uh, California has embraced the idea of the victims and mm. they're the two victims having a voice in what's going on with the proceedings.
Interesting. Yeah, and it's not like they haven't served quite a bit of time behind bars. I mean, it, it's it's been a long time. Um, well, remember, if they had been uh, the majority of the jurors in the first trial, the two jurors had voted for manslaughter. If they had been convicted of manslaughter, they already uh, would have served the maximum. Interesting. Mark Garagos, we're going to continue to stay on this. Uh, keep us posted if there are any more updates. Thank thanks for coming on tonight. Thank you, Brian. Okay, still. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.